tonight that people have spoken from Windsor to Cornwall, from Timmins, and thank God Timmins to Ajax. Together we're blazing a new trail, we're charting a new course, we're telling the world this is our time, this is our moment, because this is our province. I want to thank you, thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ontario, we should all be embarrassed. 43%, 43%, that is the percentage of eligible voters that actually went and cast a ballot in the election. That's less than half, it's a record low. And listen, I'm not here blaming anyone. I'm not that type of guy, I don't pass judgment, but there are people who are blaming voters, but voters are also blaming parties for the leaders that they chose, leaders who many voters didn't wanna vote for. We're gonna get into all of it, but before we do, welcome to News You Can Use, I'm your host, BG. And, but before we go any further, I need you to do a few things, like subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell, follow us across all of our social media, the details are in the description below, and make sure to smash that like button. So let's talk about it. Doug Ford re-elected as Premier with a very strong majority government, people. But listen to this, uh, not a lot of people showed up to the polls to cast a ballot. Now, we do know that this is not really a shock to a lot of people. I will say that I myself did predict a Ford win, but I don't believe I predicted a Ford strong majority. I was predicting more of a minority based off of the sentiments, based off of the feedback that we were hearing from people on the streets. But a lot of those people on the streets didn't go out and vote. <laughs> Guys, 43% is a record low for this province. It's the lowest we've ever seen in Ontario's history. Let me give you some stats in comparison. In 2018, 57% of eligible voters went out and cast a ballot. In 2014, that number was 52%, and in 2011, that number was 48%. So why didn't people go out and vote? I truly believe it's because a lot of people just didn't care. I think a lot of people also just didn't like who the leaders were. They didn't like the options. And I think there's another factor on top of all of this that people are tired. Remember, we're just coming out of the pandemic and people aren't thinking about politics. That's not the first thing on many people's mind. You know what's on a lot of people's mind? Uh, how am I gonna pay for gas? How am I gonna afford a home? Also, can I just have a, a break and have a little vacation? I think that's what's on people's minds. Because remember, we just came out of a federal election a few months ago, right? So people are just politicked out. And you know who gained from that? Mr. Doug Ford. I want to read out some comments from social media because on Twitter, uh, Esther wrote, I partially blame the media for constantly reporting that it is already a win for Ford weeks ago. You made people feel their vote doesn't matter. And we've heard a lot of this criticism from people saying that they don't want media outlets continuously reporting on the polls because then it makes it feel like you know, the people's minds are already made up. It doesn't incentivize you, incentivize, is that the word? Incentivize you to get out and go cast a vote because then you already think that there's no point. So that's what we also heard, but we also heard this from Big D on Instagram. That's his name, that's his name, Big D. He said, so many people that don't like Doug Ford don't show up to vote against him because the other parties are just as <laughs> up. You're gonna bleep that out, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> And that is something that a lot of people said. And I think some of the other parties, including the NDP and the Liberals, they need to take responsibility for that. Remember, this was Andrea Horvath's fourth election. So people have seen her tried time and time and time again and failed to reach the premier seat. Not saying they haven't made advances. No, they became the official opposition in 2018. But this was her last chance. And you know what? She failed. Steven Del Duca, the Liberals, I mean, listen, Nice guy in person, I interviewed him, but boring. He did not motivate anybody. He did not give people that hope. He did not give people that excitement to go up, to get out and vote. And I think that's why we saw the numbers that we saw, 43%, because people just didn't feel inspired. And when you look at the breakdown um, of the votes that came out, I do wanna highlight that traditionally, when there is low, lower voter turnout, who comes out to vote time and time again? Older people. Older people. And traditionally, older people vote conservative. So this kind of played into Doug Ford's hand, into his opportunity. The left had a bunch of issues. Their leaders were not resonating with people. Their support was splitting the vote 
amongst three different parties. They couldn't galvanize a base. They couldn't excite a base. And so people just stayed home. And you want to know what? You don't want to know what it led to? Resignations. Andrea Horvath, in her speech, play a roll, roll clip of it first. And my commitment to you is never going to waver. And I'm going to keep working to earn your confidence each and every day. I'm going to keep doing that. But tonight, it's time for me to pass the torch, to pass the baton, to hand off the leadership of the NDP. And you know what? It makes me sad, but it makes me happy because our team is so strong right now. She got emotional. She got emotional. But can I tell you, that was probably one of the most authentic speeches I've ever heard from Andrea Horvath. It actually hit me a little bit. Like I felt, I felt this authenticity that I've never felt from her before. And I'm wondering, where was that? And listen, I'm gonna give her her flowers because she brought the NDP from a party that was a distant third to the official opposition. I mean, they still remain the official opposition. Now, Stephen Del Duca also resigned. Take a listen to his speech. Having had the chance over the past couple of years to serve as your leader has been the honor of my lifetime. I want to thank you. I want to thank all Ontario Liberal Party members for giving me this chance, for working alongside me, and for making sure that we always put our best foot forward. My gosh. For a farewell speech, still feeling a little bit bored. <laughs> and so he had a disastrous showing. The Liberals didn't even make official party status. You need 12 seats to do that. Wow. They didn't even hit that again. In fact, he didn't even win his own seat. So what does that tell you? That's a big problem for the Liberals. This is now their second election where people literally looked at them and said, no, not here, not today. So they have a lot of rebuilding to do. Doug Ford, you know, whether you like him or you hate him, his brand is clearly strong. He swept literally almost every seat in the 905. All of Brampton was swept. Brampton that went NDP in 2018 went fully conservative in this election. This man gained more seats for his majority government than he had in the previous election. So I'm not gonna hear Doug, Doug Ford. Clearly the brand is strong. And I think one of the things why people like him is because, and I said this in our, in our previous episode leading up to the election, that he didn't necessarily F up the entire province. He made a lot of little mistakes, but then tried to own them in the end and give people some goodies to make them feel a little bit better. Plus he has this thing where he's almost like that you know, that gritty uncle a little bit, that gritty uncle that we all kind of have in our family. So it makes him feel a little bit more real, a little bit more personable, a little bit more authentic when you compare him to Andrea Horvath and Stephen Del Duca, two people which, you know, put a lot of people to sleep. You know, some people were telling me that I should run. Hold those comments, because that ain't happening. But I want to talk about this because what is so interesting is how messed up our electoral system is. Okay, I want to talk about the percentage of votes that each party got compared to the percentage of seats each party attained. Okay, the progressive conservatives, they got 41% of the vote. Okay, 41% of people who voted voted for Doug Ford and the conservatives, yet they got 67% of the seats at Queen's Park. The NDP, they got 24% of the vote and ended up with 25% of the seats. The Liberals also got 24% of the vote, but they only ended up with 7% of the seats. So you're probably wondering, how did that happen? Well, folks, that's called first past the post. And it's why many people want electoral reform. They want proportional representation, meaning that the percentage of the votes that you get equates to the percentage of the seats that you get. And right now we don't see that. And you're seeing that literally a party can win less than the majority of the percentage of votes, but gain the majority of the seats. When you actually look at the stats, right? If you total up the amount of people who voted for the Liberals, 24%, the NDP, 24%, and the Greens, 6%, that equates to what? 54%. 54% of people voted for more left-leaning parties. We talked about this. All three of those parties' platforms are so, so similar. Yet, 
those 54% of people are not accurately reflected in the government that we have today. 40% of people who voted chose a conservative government who holds the majority of the seats. I don't know if you can call that technically a democracy, but it's a democracy we live in. So let me know in the comments, why do you think people decided not to vote in this election? I wanna hear from you right now. Hey BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel. And listen to this, we have more great content for you like this video right here and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now and tap that notification bell.